Hey guys, it is Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I don't normally do a news announcement or something like that, but I'm sure a lot of you have heard that Unity have been set or announced to acquire Weta Digital, and we're going to talk about this today and talk about their blog post that they posted and some of the things that might be beneficial to you to know what the future might look and hold for Unity with their partner with Weta Digital. So. They're specifically buying into their the artist tools, the pipeline, the intellectual property that is part of Weta and the award-winning talent that actually works there. Weta will still continue as being their own entity, which is called Weta FX, but it will become one of Unity's largest customers in media and the entertainment space. And Unity are going to combine the leading visual effects tools and the talent to be able to take Unity to the next level and develop lots of tools with what they call a full potential of the metaverse. If you don't know what Weta Digital are, that they're a visual effects company based in Wellington, New Zealand, and they were founded by Peter Jackson, Richard Tyler, and Jamie Selkirk in 1993, and they've worked on hundreds of different really massive titles, probably most prominently the Lord of the Rings series, King Kong, Avatar, like some of the more modern Marvel films like the Avengers series, Wolverine, Deadpool, and Eternals, which came out really recently. Anything with state-of-the-art visual effects, they most likely have worked on. So it will bring unified tools and incredible scientists and technologies who work at Weta Digital can accelerate Unity's mission to give content creators easy to use high performance tools which brings a lot of visions to life. This pipeline has been developed with an artist's first mentality to give results with incredible set of tools creating the pinnacle of visual effects and it's Unity's goal to bring those world-class exclusive tools to the hands of millions of creators and artists around the world. So we're going to just take a look at some of the actual technology that they've got which you might be well be able to get your hands on when this partnership comes into fruition. So a lot of these tools have been used in a lot of the Marvel series Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Planet of the Apes, Wonder Woman and Suicide Squad and uh, forgive me if I pronounce some of these words incorrectly. So you've got Manuka and Gazebo which are being able to look at either the final frames of a particular production or being able to see it in real time within the viewport and be able to affect it no matter which applications you use to be able to make an outcome change. They have some technology called Loki, which is a physics based simulation of visual effects, which include water, fire, smoke, hair, cloth, muscles, plants, and it's a physically accurate for complex simulations through through lots of different high-end technologies. They still do have a lot of great physically based workflows, which include Fizz Lights, Fizzcam, and HDR Convert, which provides a foundation for lighting and color workflows. And using these tools, artists can create spectral based lighting and accurately replicate effects of different lenses, sensors, and other parts of the pipeline. And most of this technology does work together, so you get the crossover there. They've got some old Koru, which is an advanced puppet rigging system optimized for speed and multi-character performance. And this allows directors and developers to create constraints, rigs, deformers, and puppets to support high performance animation, cloth simulation, and similar technologies. They've got very specific facial tech when they've used a lot of things within Lord of the Rings for Gollum to be able to use to look for facial recognition for muscles and transfer active face recognition to the specific puppets that they have. They have something called Barbershop which is a suite of tools for hair and fur that can support entire workflows for growth through grooming. Artists can produce a combination of procedural and artist guided tools to grow hair and fur, adjust the growth patterns, have the groom of the final models, advance procedural tools to support concepts such as braided hair and resulting in models that are simulation ready to prove realistic dynamic results from motion and wind. They have system for tissue which enables artists and animators to create biologically accurate anatomical characters and they accurately represent muscles and skin to transfer results to human simulations. Apterex which is for feathers, hand sculpting and specifically to do with feathers. They've got specific world building tools called the scenic designer and city builder spot world building layout dressing from a range of planet scales to small scale scenes for both artists with node graphs, 
content programmality, and manual adjustments for placement. They've got Lumberjack, which provides a core tool set for vegetation, including models, editing, deformation. And this allows you to edit plant topology, including animated geometry, managing level of details, instances, and so much more in there. And they've got one called Tatara, which is the procedural growth of simulation of vegetation and biomes which integrates into lumberjack to create large scale complex scenes which can be easily generated and grow over time they've got something called eddy which is an advanced liquid smoke and compositing plugin for refining a volumetric effects and it allows you to create high quality fluid simulations and have them inside a compositing environment and they've got for very much post-production they've got the production review live viewing and projector these allow you to prepare and review for appropriate color spaces frame ranges and set the frame rate and resolution for final outcomes and last that unity won't just be getting all of these specific technologies that we already have developed unity will be inheriting their asset library which will include all of their nature environments flora fauna humans man-made objects materials textures and so much more and the team will continue to work on all the major tv and film productions which will feed into bigger libraries when it comes into the future and this all will be connected to the cloud and so these specific effects pipelines and technologies will actually integrate with other things that unity natively supports whether that's speed tree or specific visualization and real-time specific parts and with it being added to the cloud it allows you to integrate with workflows that you already use and take advantage of the advanced digital creation tools like say the things that are in Maya and Houdini and you'll be able to move and manipulate content within Unity and all those things together. So we'll have to see what happens in the future, how we get access to all these tools, if there's going to be a paywall for these tools, if there's something that it's going to be access to everybody, if the library of content will be something that you might have to pay for in the future. You let me know down in the comments what you think about it. So be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 115 scripts and projects from all my content content on YouTube. Be sure to come and chat to me on Discord. Check out my great assets on the Unity Store and thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel because you're all fantastic people just like everybody else who subscribes, likes and comments on this video. So thanks very much for watching. Cheers.